Big, big welcome to uh, John O'Shea. Loads of people mention this specific moment of your career. Oh, I have, well, I have a feeling it'll be about a nutmeg. He'll definitely be attracting, not that Blackburn fans would want to hear, but he, look, he'll have to be attra attracting attention. Do you know if you are going to take charge of the friendlies in June? If he was at Man City now doing that, that everybody would say he had to be player of the season. Because important for Ten Hag in terms of getting a trophy on the board again. Oh, oh that's a bad one. Yeah. <laughs> 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 I'd refuse to answer that if I were you. Thank you for joining us for another episode of No Tippy Tappy Football brought to you by William Hill. And before we introduce our guest this week, we just want to say thank you for subscribing on YouTube. We are just about to hit 30,000. We'd, we'd love you to subscribe to our YouTube channel and get us to 30,000. We've been growing every single week. And also, Sam, did you know we've got our own Instagram now? I didn't know. They've done it without telling us. Have I they? saw it, yeah. All oh, right, okay. Came up. I was like, all oh, right, that's me and Sam. Well, you know. You know how brilliant I am on Instagram, don't you? So. <laughs> well, we, Not. <laughs> we <laughs> I are keep on Instagram. Trying. I keep yeah. trying, but I just can't grasp it. I'm sorry. I need 16 hours of telling me what to do and what to like and how to post and where to send it, share it, yeah, cut it. Crop it, who knows? I don't know. I haven't well, got a clue. Thankfully, you're not in charge of our Instagram page. I oh, know, very good. There's I wish some, somebody get in, in control of mine, like me. Somebody, want, if you want to do Sam's Instagram, do let us know. And in the meantime, subscribe to our No TV Time Football Instagram and you'll get all the lovely clips of the show. So, um, Sam, would you like to introduce our guest today? Yes, uh, I'm a, uh, it's a real pleasure to see uh, this guest of uh, ours again today. Uh, it was our time, at, well, obviously, I've known him a long time in football, but. Obviously, uh, our our main time was the great escape at Sunderland. So uh, it's a, a welcome, a big, big welcome to uh, John O'Shea. John, how are we doing? Thanks, Thanks very much for coming. No pleasure, pleasure. Great to be welcome. here. And he's been laughing at this this title of mine, no tippy tappy football. You know what I mean? <laughs> so you know he he knows I was a bit more basic when we were at Sunderland to get to get out of trouble, and uh, it needed to be. I think John John would agree with that. And in the end. You did let us we play did very as well, well. though. You I did, 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 I think that, that, that our our time at Sunderland, what I like the most about it, as tough as it was in the beginning, was the fans. Mm. There was a forty-two thousand five hundred average on a team that only got out the bottom four or five in the last week of the season. Like you I mean, so it was a it was. A, but we uh, we were brilliant the last eleven games. We only lost one in the last eleven, um, and. Uh, I think that uh, I, I put, and then unfortunately England came and then forward, England came hey, knocking look, on the door, yeah. So it, was, it went the other way, but no, because look, I, I think that was a sorry for interrupting you. It's for me, it was like a perfect match at the time, and yeah, uh, when you came along in that sense, because it was just the, what the club was looking for at the time. The match, it was um, yeah, and how you made look. That's something now I'm heading into in the sense of management coaching. And obviously, I'd played against some of Sam's teams and how they'd gone about it. But then when he came in and you see what he actually does to empower coaches, staff, people, it was, it was, I'm just picking him up quickly here before I start the battle. <laughs> no, but no, it's very nice of No, it, but that's, that, it was, that was just great to see how he kind of went into a club and put his stamp on it. And um, the staff obviously still remember how, how good he was there in terms of. The, the dinners they used to have and stuff like that. There was plenty plenty of stories, but... Oh, um, do tell us a story, know, John. Some of the younger staff could, couldn't keep up. Keep, no, keep, couldn't no, they keep couldn't, up with them, you couldn't know. keep up, no. <laughs> they were lucky they didn't have to stay up as long as I did before they went to bed. Because in the younger days, if you're staying up with me, you can only go to bed after I've gone. Like, I, mean, but I learned that one off Sam Ellis like, in the okay. old days. So, uh, But that, that, that went down the window a long, long time ago. So it was sharing our time together. Uh, after working particularly hard, which everybody does behind the scenes, and the, when the when the lads had been basically the night before the game, 
I always wanted to take the staff out to a nice restaurant, relax and uh, and enjoy enjoy a meal, and then chill out on. But but obviously the conversation would be all about the football, the yeah. club, and what's happening, and and we could share a lot together uh, without being un, under pressure about doing our jobs. So. Yeah, you'd had the work. The work was done, wasn't it? Yeah. Everything was done and everything That's was right. prepared. So it was a little couple of hours to switch off. And some of the younger staff members that were invited to some of the dinners kind of got caught a few times, didn't That's they? That's right, but, they did. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> John, from your time at Sunderland, I've been dying to ask somebody this. Um, Sam, on this show, absolutely loves Jermaine Defoe. We had him as a guest. He mentions yeah. him many times. In any time we ask him about his best team ever, he's, was it obvious at the time when you were there how much Sam was in love with Jermaine Defoe? <laughs> <laughs> I didn't even know I was going to get goals. <laughs> I was going to be in love with um, I know when, you, when you'd see Jermaine finishing, you'd realise why you'd be in love with him. Um, not just in terms of the personality he has as well, but his actual technique of finishing, you knew if someone was going to get a chance, you wanted him to get it really, didn't you? Yeah. Because it was going to hit the target. He was going to go low into the corners and generally the keeper was going to struggle to stop it. So, um, no, he was a really good player for Sunderland. It was just a shame we couldn't keep hold of him, obviously, um, at the time. But that was always going to be the case because when he got the number of goals he did, he was... and obviously 18, great. John, 18. Yeah. He kept us up that year yeah. and, and, uh, and played up front on his own. When everybody told me he didn't want to, we didn't like it, or he, he, we just played played to him the right way. We didn't yeah. we didn't play to him because he wasn't a hold up player. We just got the ball in the box, and if you put the ball in the box for Jermaine Defoe, rarely does he miss. So uh, he was the main one of the main reasons because you look at the teams today. You look at uh, Everton at the moment. Yeah. You know, they can have 20 shots against Man United and don't score. You know, and any team that, that has that many shots should be scoring scoring two or three. Or Liverpool, how many or shots? Or Liverpool, they yeah. Really you know, I mean, they, I mean be crazy. Uh, Nunes, be... Nunes had more shots than any, anybody else in the league. Really? And he's only scored 10. Yeah. So he's he's ahead there. of everybody else for shots. So I went down to see them play um, against Atalanta last yeah. week. Yeah. And that was a Did big you enjoy surprise, it? Like, <laughs> no, I enjoyed watching Atlanta. <laughs> I enjoyed watching Atlanta. Um, but it was just crazy because they have been creating chances, as you said. They have been well against chances. Man United. I watched the Man United game, and and Liverpool missed so many chances. You know, first half was incredible. Incredible. Wasn't it? They should have been able to say, yeah. and that's look at that's coming back to haunt them now massively, mm. isn't it? Because they would be probably they'd be. They'd be still in the tie against Atalanta if they took their chances. But well, Diaz and Salah are mi missing them. You wouldn't expect to miss them, you know what I mean? Yeah, so. it's not just Nunes. No, People obviously no. keep picking keep on Nunes. Yeah, but they do, actually. The, yeah. You know what I mean? Salah's been missing them. Diaz has been missing them too. Yeah. So it's been a combination. But what a weekend for your team. <laughs> she yeah. says with a big smile on her I face. Know. I wanted to bring it up before you did. <laughs> okay. <laughs> you know I mean? I'm happy to talk about I knew, it. I knew when I... Uh, when I woke up Monday and I thought podcast coming up Wednesday, Natalie will be like smiling away <laughs> yeah. after after an unexpected weekend that we uh, that we saw. I mean, I, I s sat downstairs and watched it, watched it all the way through, and all day Saturday, all day Sunday, and I could I couldn't quite believe what was happening. It was why because everybody loves the Premier League. It is, but when you think it, one, when you think of a way, weekend, if Liverpool. Know? And uh, Arsenal had been away from home. Oh well, yeah. You'd be kind of thinking, think, right? Oh well, yeah. Tricky games, Tricky, these yeah. tricky games. But then they're at home. You're kind of like, wow, that's a big slip. And look, Villa, Villa are a good team. Don't get me wrong. And but I was still thought Arsenal would get over the line, especially when Liverpool had got beat too. I was, I was really surprised well, in that. Yeah, uh, they've got two things that Aston Villa they haven't had for a while: world class goalkeeper, the number of saves he made, and. Uh, Ollie Watkins, Ollie Watkins yeah. and their two their two combinations are the, the 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 start of building a good team, like you mean. So, you know, I look I look at Arsenal now and say, why did you let him go? You know, I mean, he, he was a World Cup winner, time, wasn't it? World yeah. Cup winner, and he's like he's he has to be the top goalkeeper. He has to be one number one or number two in the Premier League, without a doubt. He's up there. I actually played with Emmy. The he came on loan to Reading. All would right, you believe okay, right, right. Yeah, 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 right. And he's obviously he'd been a bit of a a journey goalkeeper at Arsenal. I think he'd had a few loans and yeah. a bit of, and it wasn't working out for him. 
And I don't want to say we, we got all this confidence going at Reading or whatever. But no. Why were you that bad? Exactly. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Look what we did for Pickford at Sunderland. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. More shots than anybody exactly. else. Yeah. You had to save him all. So, um, no, it was, it was, it's been incredible to see. You knew he was a talented keeper, but he just seemed to. It's, it kind of happens with players, doesn't it? They go to a, a, a club and they get a bit of confidence going and they go, right, this I can do it. And he went back to Arsenal that time and just, I think they won the cup that year, if I'm not mistaken. And they still sold him that. So I don't know whether there was an issue over contracts or whatever at the time or why why they let him go. I, as you said, you'd be scratching your head going, why why, why did yeah. they? Why did they? And, and maybe they had deals lined up because they brought... Was it Leno in that time? Yeah. They brought Leno yeah. in the time to kind of replace him. But none of them, are, that, for me, in my opinion, no. none, of them are, none of the goalkeepers as good as he is. Look, he's got a, he's <laughs> a bit of a personality about him too. Well, even better. Oh, no, that's great. what I mean. Even better. But, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you mean the usual, is a bit of a nutter job? You know, a little bit. Yeah, a little bit. Is that goalkeepers in general from your experience? Without a doubt, but uh, well, no. The, well, the best one I ever looked, Edwin, and Edwin was so <laughs> so. Edwin Van der Sar was just so calm and calculated. Yeah. He was the exact opposite. So, not all of them. Not all no. of them. Definitely not. But Pick, Pick was Pick, a bit that way. Wasn't he? Pick, Pick, Pick was. <laughs> oh my god! But that brilliant because you see, he he has this kind of saying. What's the saying? Let's get get the rave on. I'll get let's get the rave on or something. You just know he's he loves his rave music and he's an absolute. Great, what a lad! Yeah, I, lo- yeah. I love him to bits. Um, uh, but he's a personality he, again. You personal- see. Yeah, he's brilliant. You need a lot of that as a goalie, I think. But yeah. you know, personality. Well, I've told you many times, we six-year-old plays in goal. He loves Emmy. He loves him. Okay. Yeah, it's, it, and I think it's part to do with the personality. It is the, the slightly, <laughs> it's, the slight creepy. You'll grow out of it. Yeah. You're hoping it will, won't you? I don't know what You're it says about him, Sam. Normally, normally, <laughs> normally. normally that's they all want to start up front and then work their way back. Yeah. It's that, it might be I, mean, I want to be sent yeah. forward. I want to be sent forward. And then they go back, you know. So He does think, he'd, and you know what he said to me the other day? He made a save in his game. Um, he's little under six, his game. They won seven, one. He made one really big save. And afterwards, he said to me, he'd be contemplating it. He said, Mummy, I think that save was similar to what Martin has made in the 2022 World Cup final. Ooh, he's six. It's I was nice. like, all right, six. okay. Oh, well done. And he thought oh. he should have got man of the match for the one save. So he's got confidence. He's got you know confidence. What? Wow, he, he likes his football. If he's something like that, <laughs> he and he's a memory like that already. Oh, fantastic, <laughs> isn't it? Six. Um, so yes, we are. We should say we're recording this. It's Wednesday morning. Manchester City play Real Madrid tonight. So when this goes out, we will already know the result. So either everybody will be laughing at me as I tell you that I'm really nervous, or everybody <laughs> will be like, "What was she? What was she nervous about?" But we'll skip over it because no point. Because by the time everybody listens to this, it'll already be done. <laughs> I think it'll just, it'll, be be a, done. it'll just be a great game. That's what I think. Okay. Anyway. Okay. So, in terms of you, John, um, recently, give us an update on your your life, your career, what, what's been happening <laughs> recently. Um, well, look, recently, obviously, I took charge of the two Irish games, uh, men's national team against uh, Belgium and Switzerland, which was look incredible. An honour, um, oh, yeah, yeah, an eye opener too to actually be the one who's picking the eleven, picking the. How long did that take team. then? <laughs> <laughs> Couple did you lose sleep? Couple of did sleep this night. <laughs> they were only friendlies as well. I know, so, yeah. um, no, it was brilliant. But that, look, that's something I've been working towards. Yeah, that, absolutely. Like the last the last few years in terms of when I finished up playing at Reading, went in on the staff at Reading and then went up to um, Stoke and got involved with Ireland on the 21s, then went up with the senior team under Stephen Kenny and obviously then got the chance to to take these two games, you know. So it was it's been... Look, I really enjoyed it. You get it. It's not obviously nice to leave players out of the team and what have you, but ultimately that's that's what you're you're there to do, isn't it? And yeah. But you're planning to. We could have had two easier games in the sense of Belgium and Switzerland. But <laughs> <laughs> look, we another day we 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 beat Belgium. You know, Evan missed a penalty. He was unfortunate. He slipped just before. Um, he he made contact with the ball, and we had some really good chances. Chidozi Og Benny and. Sammy Smodich and on another day could have we could have we could have won the game, you know. So but what an amazing, amazing experience. And sure. look, I don't know what's happening. They're still the you, dragging you, the you might be able to update me. Well, do you, well, have I you don't been know. in touch? I mean, or... <laughs> so do you know if you are going to take charge of the friendlies in June? Have you been asked or no, do you know look, it's happening? one of them. No, I, I I was actually over doing something in, in Dublin yesterday, um, for the Europa League. Because um, obviously the finals in Dublin, I'm the ambassador for the tournament, um, and I was over there with the trophy, and obviously I had to speak to some of the press there yesterday too. 
No, there's no update really. We're just waiting to see. Hopefully it gets sorted quickly because there's a bit of a knock on effect in terms of um obviously you're planning for two, who's, who's two picking, games. Who's picking the new coach for it'd be well Mark Canham would be the he's the director of football and yeah. he's um he's been in the role a while now and he's obviously been doing some of the uh looking at potential candidates or whatever and it's been they've been they've been, been, been close. Time, yeah, been. but look that's but I, in, to get it right, right, I get that. If it's yeah, getting it right, yeah, that's right. fine. And yeah. look, obviously they've spoken to one. Of, I think obviously Lee Carsley was was high on their list, but Lee's obviously happy with with England's under twenty ones and doing what he's doing there. So um, look, we'll see what happens. But uh, would you like it? Would you do it? Yeah, look, as I've said, it's it's of course a, it's you an, would. It's a, yeah. Got to ask, Sam. I've got to ask. Yeah. No, no, no. I, I, I took the I trying to be cautious. He snapped the runs off. I took the two games and to. To manage your country is a, is an amazing honour. Look, I've been involved with Irish team. I've been playing since I was fifteen with Irish team. So I've been and then coaching. So it's been over. Well, what? I'll give them a quick maths about um, the thirty odd years, just less than thirty odd years involved with Ireland type of thing with coaching and playing. So that's enough experience for me as well. I think to to be involved in it. So and then obviously the last two games and I've. Just really enjoyed it, but look, let's wait and see. Let's wait and see that. He's been on this podcast now, though, Sam. So he's got a chance. We've got, mm, that's we've true. We get. Got with, oh, is it? Yeah. Oh, oh, John. Yeah, there's jobs oh. pop up for a lot. Like you mean ten? Yeah. Ten, ten, ten guests have got managerial jobs. Ten guests. Yeah. Yeah. So there you go. Good tomorrow, you've been here tomorrow, a bit earlier. Yeah. Tomorrow, you'll be man. <laughs> well, I tried. I know, kept, but then this job, this job, job oh, came up. The two games still came up. Fitted in. I'm sure you could. <laughs> um, if not Ireland is managing or coaching is it what you want to do is that is that the future yeah, yeah look hopefully um, look I've been involved obviously we were in before Ireland I was in with Wayne at Birmingham um, and look obviously it didn't go to plan in, in terms of chatting with Sam earlier in terms of um, obviously you have to get results as you just mentioned there yeah. um, the short term you need to get results in and but in the sense of what we were told well, Wayne in particular, in the sense of it's a long term plan, long term, <laughs> <laughs> long term project type of thing. But look, <laughs> you see what's happened now, even though obviously T Tony Mowbray's gone in. I went in, and obviously, hopefully, uh, Tony's getting getting better soon. He's obviously had a few issues, but and obviously, Gary Rowe is in there. He now. was on this yeah. podcast yeah. the week before okay. he got He was on here saying he'd had enough, like you yeah. mean, that's had to build on his break. Just, yeah. Yeah. And now he's like, yeah, you know, but obviously how the circumstances came about. Had a couple of good so. results as well, didn't he? Yeah, they won. The, I think they Two won the last one yeah. um, at home to Coventry. And look, when we were we were close to a couple of big wins against Ipswich, and I think it was Plymouth away, where uh, I think it was Christian Bailey got sent off when he probably shouldn't have been sent off. You know, a couple of things, and if mm. those results swing your way, um, Always, yeah. definitely, yeah, it's a big momentum one because it was just, and you go back to the timing. Of when you obviously you go into a job in ter in terms like that, you probably look hindsight is great. I don't need to answer for 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 Wayne. He's he's big and bold enough to do it himself, and oh, he, yeah. and he look he will. He look he's what he's thirty eight, thirty nine. Mm. Um, he's had three managerial jobs. He's getting great experience. So I have no doubt when he does, um, decide to get back in, that he'll be much better for it again. As 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 you normally would be with the more experience you gain. It's like anybody else if he gets back in again, though, John, and and, and we all know this, it, that one will need to be relatively successful to. Yeah. You know, I I did it as I did brilliant job at Derby when in the in the turmoil and the circumstances, under, yeah. and the circumstances like you mean, you know, then go, goes out to the states and then obviously comes back thinking with the support that's behind it, which is. A great thing to 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 feel that, that you know they want you, they're going to support you. This is a yeah, the long term. Plan. You hope so, but then You've you got, don't even get the January window. You yeah, don't get to bring you know what I mean. Uh, 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 so. You know, so. Um, Sunderland, would you fancy that? I look. I, I've I, I, when you think of I was there for uh, six, seven years. Um, and amazing. Was it that long? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Steve it's, Bruce brought you, didn't he? Steve, yeah, Steve. Yeah. Steve brought me up there and with Wes. With Wes and uh, Wes thought I was doing a runner on him, but we're actually we were just waiting on uh, my first, our first child to be born. I was like, I'm on the way, but just I'm waiting for the first <laughs> first kid to be born here. Can you give me a second? They thought oh, he's definitely up to something. He's talking, <laughs> he's talking, he's talking to someone else. He's talking to another team, but no, Alfie was he was two weeks uh, two weeks late. 
So, um, and it look, an amazing time. You know, as you mentioned, it's an amazing club, Sam. It is. It really is an amazing club. We had an amazing time up there. But um, it's a tr it's a tricky one. Yeah, I'd, uh, ultimately, I'd love to be Sunderland manager, but I spoke to Tony Mowbray when he came into Birmingham about the kind of the model that they have there at the minute in terms of they're really going young players. Um, and you kind of look, but it's the thing for me is yeah, it's a great idea on paper, <laughs> and it, but rarely works. Look, the classic. Rarely. You look at Bayern Leverkusen. Javi Alonso, first thing he said was, right, I need experience. Mm. Goes and gets Xhaka straight away. It's almost the first player that he thinks, right, I need that central general to take control of things for me. Right. And experience, what, what's Xhaka, 31, 32 yeah. type of thing. And if, So you kind of have to have a mix. Yeah, you need to get young players in, the right, and the assets to sell on and all that idea. Yeah, it's a brilliant, but the cutthroat nature of getting promoted, winning promotions, getting back to the Premier League, staying there and making your mark again. You need you need a blend of experience and youth. Well, very best of luck with whatever job comes up next. Because one, you've been on here now, so one will come up, John, so <laughs> soon, soon. Um, we mentioned... Manu well, uh, if it, it does, I'll be ringing him up saying, hey, well... Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it again, we have. We've helped again. That'd be great. <laughs> Well, we're getting a reputation and I like it. Um, we mentioned City at the start now, but I'd like to kind of delve deeper into that, obviously, with your vast experience of winning the Premier League, which, by the way, we ask people to send in questions. Um, we ask our listeners and our subscribers this to send in questions dangerous. every week. This is no, dangerous. I feel like this is more of a dig at me because it's not a question, but Cathal tweeted us to say, fair play, John, no question marks hanging over your Premier League titles. Thanks, Cathal. Oh. Thanks for that. <laughs> Oh, no, she's going straight in. Yeah. So, come on, so give us a rundown. Give us a rundown. Of, oh, oh. Allegedly. Give us a rundown of all what you've won. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Um, come on, in yeah, the little trophy cabinet at home. Uh, you know what I mean? The, the five Premier Leagues, a few League Cups, FA Cup, the Champions League, World Club Championships. Uh, and don't forget the European Championships under 16 with the Republic of Ireland. Oh, right, okay. First, that, was, uh, that was the first one of the first, first was it? First ones, yeah. yeah first that's ones. one you remember the most, yeah. yeah. Um, but did you very, win the Community Shield, John? That's the big one. The community Shield? Oh, I'd say about three or four times, I think. <laughs> not, um, I think so, yeah. We'd lost, but we've lost. The, you remember the ones you lose? We should, I definitely should have more FA Cups. We lost a few finals there. Um, Arsenal on penalties. Ah, uh, Chelsea. Oh, you you remember how, them ones see how more. jealous I am, like. <laughs> remember them ones more. No, look, amazing, we, amazing, we, yeah, amazing. we had an amazing run amazing. of it. When you think yeah. I was at, I was in United for thirteen years, nine with the nine with the first team, and we won five Premier Leagues in those nine years, kind of. So, right. um, did you no, get a testimonial? No, I didn't, no because I, I'm laughing now. <laughs> uh, I had a year to run. On my contract and the boss got uh, rid of you. The, the, <laughs> <laughs> he was like, "No, you can stay, but you're maybe not going to play as much, you know, type of thing." And I was always, like, "Oh, okay. he was gentle but, with you then." No, look, he was, uh, yeah, and I definitely it I, I, in me kind of if hindsight, you go back and say, "Should have stayed, possibly," and kind of scrapped it out, and then you're out of contract, type of thing. But look, I was never. I was always more of a I was thinking, no, I want to go play. Sunderland had just finished 10th in the Premier League. And I thought, right, right, this is, Steve's got something. And then I've, he, Steve gets the bullet then three months later. That, yeah. was, that was my first kind of... Is well, that when Ellis took over? Um, just after? Because Quinny, Quinny, went, Quinny went, didn't he? Yeah. Which which was I thought was a bit of a mistake. By yeah. Me, so. I know. But look, that just, it was like, I was in a bit of a fantasy land. In 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 United, and then oh, it was like oh, welcome oh, to welcome to welcome reality, to reality of football because <laughs> it was like what ten managers, ten yeah. eleven managers in six seven years. Then you know, so that was me real football education in terms of coaching and management. So you've been in a lot of dressing rooms at this point of the season where you are in the title hunt, where you're leading or where you're chasing. Obviously, given the weekend that we talked about at the start, Manchester City now very much in the driving seat, win all six games, win the league. What's it What's it like in the dressing rooms at this point? What's it like? like menta I'm thinking like mentality wise. Did you all just, did you just feel, no, we, we are going to do this? You have a little bit of that, but ultimately there's a, because you're watching results coming in. 
and you're waiting for kickoffs, you might have an early kickoff. You might be the late. Yeah, yeah. There's all those kind of Murder flips. Some and, of them. Yeah, yeah, the scenarios. You're coming back from the European games. You know the manager's going to have a little change in the team, one or two change, just to freshen it up because lad, lads are shattered from games. Um, there's that combination, but ultimately you just feel like there's been some games, I'm trying to remember over the years, where you're losing. You're losing 1-0 with 10 minutes to go. You get a couple of late goals. The momentum you get like that. You get Bolton, Drama, Chelsea, 2-2. Two, two. It was a 2-2, two, two, yeah, I think, was. Yeah, and it was I got like, a case of wine, me. Oh, Sir Alex. Yeah. Oh, big was, case of wine came like, over that you, week. Like, when you I mean, think of stuff, yeah. the celebrations on the bus when those results come through. Yeah. And the 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 fee <laughs> that's brilliant. <laughs> so I, I'm sure it was a nice case too. It was, sure. it was a nice case. Yeah. Oh, brilliant. No, but look, stuff like you you get a feeling. Um, and look, it's the more you obviously we've had the success, the amount of players that whether it be um, Giggsy, Scolzy, Butty, Roy, Gaznev, all the lads that've been there, done so many titles, and you're looking around going. Oh, we're all right. We have Ronaldo, Rooney, uh, Van Nistelrooy, Tevez, Berbatov. We're going to get. We're going to get a few goals yeah. here. You know what I mean? Well, yeah. What was it interesting when Wes was on? It was interesting about how you were talking about. Uh, that he didn't. He didn't say this light, lightly, of course. But he said, he said it was easy, it was easier playing in a game sometimes than training at Man United because he were playing against. Yeah. Your player, your own players, your own player. who were so good. That when it came to Saturday, the players you were playing against weren't as good as the ones you were training against, and and he said like it was like that was the best know, preparation you had. Best, you know that, what I mean? It, it really kept you. I'm and talking your toes, didn't if, it? Like if you knew, obviously, where you would have mentioned it or known about it. Obviously, you had an international player generally fighting for your place. That's right. So if you didn't perform, you had a lad there waiting, right? He's in coming to get you. But some of the training games we had, like. Sky would have loved to have been there, if you know what I mean, in terms of uh and the manager knew, but the manager knew then as well, he'd go, Right, that's enough. Yes. He saved that for Saturday. Saturday yes. that. He, he's like let us bubble along and he'd let a few tackles go. Oh yeah. yeah. He go, Right, right, that's enough. But um Walter Smith, God geez, God rest him. He was obvious he was God um, rest his soul, yeah, yeah, he was one that was brilliant. I'll never forget it. He just used to play on. Yeah. <laughs> play on. No fouls. No fouls. No. Like, no. Ronaldo got a bit upset a few times. But no, look, that was brilliant because you knew everyone was just at the that's getting back to your at point. The peak. At peak. Yeah, but you you knew, right, everyone was ready to go. And whether it be uh the team that was starting or the team that was going to be starting the next game. And I think City look they have the experience now of doing it. And Arsenal, to be fair, I thought they would stay at it just because the goals they were getting, Sam. Yeah. They, they were scoring lots of goals. And yes. I thought they, they haven't been doing that the last couple of seasons, but I thought they've been really getting a good few goals. And I thought they might just hang in there this year. But when you see the quality of the younger players they have, the more experience they are getting, I think they'll be they'll be knocking on the door again next season too. Um, in terms of your, obviously Manchester United, you're like most... you famous club um, it's FA Cup semi-final weekend this weekend coming mm -hmm. up so City have Chelsea on Saturday then United have Coventry on Sunday I mean just uh, simply how important is it that Manchester United win that game and then win the FA Cup oh. yeah look it's, it's cr crucial um, but first and foremost take care of Coventry yeah. and then yeah, look whatever happens with City and Chelsea you, at the minute you'd say City will be favourites to beat Chelsea but uh, Chelsea with Cole Palmer, it looks Story they can, there, yeah. It? Look, you can, you can possibly wow. see it, and I wouldn't mind seeing it, obviously. But look, Coventry, uh, Coventry have a bit of firepower. It's not going to be oh, a straightforward, and that, they'll be confident because look, uh, you know, you'd have been, they have been conceding shots, haven't they? they they've that's been an yeah. issue for them, and um, but look. If United's His old front, club if United, back, yeah, like Matt, Matt Robbins, Mark Robbins yeah. if United's front five, front four turn up, United win the game. I think. I think they'll have yes. too much for Coventry's yeah. uh, defenders, but they'll they'll have to be on guard, United, because that's the one thing Coventry do have. They've God. probably slipped up a little bit themselves. I thought they were going to get the playoffs, yeah, but yeah. I think they they might just miss out. But um, they, they do have firepower. Uh, Sims, Adji right. Wright. Um, yeah, I'm surprised Everton let him go. 
Yeah, I think the probably... many goals he scored for Coventry? I think he's, I think he's eight, 18, maybe. 18, isn't he? Yeah, something he's... I know it's not the Premier League, right like me, no. but, you know, with them... With, with them I just thought he's had, he done well, hadn't he? He done well on yeah. his loans. Yeah. And sometimes you think, right, give the kid a chance now. Yeah. And they, maybe they felt he did, and he, he, he wasn't up to it, I don't know, but... Um, He's definitely done himself no harm. No harm there'll, yeah. be, there'll be plenty of teams looking at him now, that's for sure. That's for sure but look, yeah. he'll be looking at that, going to Wembley. What an occasion for Coventry too, but I, I'd be hopeful now United will get across the line and have a... Look, it's important for Ten Hag um, in terms of getting a trophy on the board again. If he can do that, he obviously got to the final last year. Um, I don't know who beat him, but... Uh, <laughs> no, look, it's, man, it's, a, it's a case that it could be City again more than likely. Let's be honest, it's not going to surprise us if they did beat Chelsea in the, in the other semi-final. So let's wait and see. Given that Van Hal got sacked after he won the FA Cup, I mean, is it even is it even enough for Ten Hag, do you think, if they win it? Well, look, he's, it's, uh, it's definitely going to do him more favours to win it, let's, yeah. let you, you'd imagine so. And whatever happens... Sam, Sam will know a lot more than me in terms of um, when the new owners come in, our new uh, part owners, and they're changing lots of things at the club in terms of recruitment, director of football, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera, um, that possibly managers change too. You've obviously we've we, you've seen it a lot, but for for me, I don't think that would be the definitive answer. I think he should probably stay on for a bit longer. But look. That's that's not the powers that be will decide. Not, I think if he wins the FA Cup, it's definitely biggest, help him. Not the biggest worry. Okay. No. Man United. The big the biggest worry is the infrastructure behind the scenes, which is clearly what needs to get a, a huge amount better, particularly in recruitment terms. Like yeah. I mean, because you look at um, how many it, it happened at Everton, and they've run out of money. You know what I mean? And yeah. Uh, look at the state of the club now, because all all the changes and all the New, new style of recruitment. Somebody out, somebody in, somebody out. Instead of making sure that stayed, if you if you if you got it right, that stays no matter what or who coach comes in. Yeah, because you've got it right, like you mean, and that and that's that's imperative and that's great for you as the manager or the head coach. Now you're not manager anymore <laughs> because it's there. And then you have your influence on that, and and you, you then help, uh, start working with that, and you know it's good enough. So then you start getting the right players in that earn earn the, earn the reputation that they have, where they come from, earn the money that they're given, uh, and become effectively more valuable. So uh, whenever somebody wants to overpay, you accept that you're going to lose them, but you you're always after. Probably twenty percent more than your your valuation. Yeah, you know, even Sir Alex let Ronaldo go for eighty million. Nobody yeah. thought that would happen, but it did because eighty million was at the time just yeah. M- mega. Yeah, yeah, you know. So, so that that is, you know, something that that Man United have to achieve. I, I think before they before they look at the coach. Yeah, I think the key you know yeah, just the recruitment is nail on the head. I think that's been the key bit. When you look at even obviously Liverpool have got they've got Richard Hughes in from Bournemouth, isn't it? Yeah. Kind of help them on the recruitment side of things, and and um, there's there's teams always behind the scenes are they're, they're making moves. Yeah. But so United have kind of looked around the people to think. Well, they wanted like, Dan Ashford, didn't they? Well, do they have him or do they not? You know, it's like. I'm not sure they want to pay, that much, they they pay that much so, compensation. Do they? Do they want to pay that much compensation? I know, but you're hopeful that. They can get these things done because if that's the people they've targeted, yeah, you, you hope you hope that they can get it done. I don't know, like that. Obviously, we know we don't can't believe everything a, we read. It's such a long process, though, John. And the slip up with anybody is that you you have to you have to take a step back and make the process. It, it was uh, what it was five years, four years at Bolton before I became comfortable with our recruitment policy. Yeah. The the rest of the time prior to that was like was being um, a good risk taker by a cal- calculation of of stats stats view, view, watching what a, viewing yeah, what I see you know what I mean which stood me in good stead at Sunderland by watching watching what why scout and watching them 
yeah. on video and that like and it's going yeah well that suits us need that what that because I have to make that quick decision Bolton was like five four or five years of easy and he's out easy and he's out easy and he's out easy and he's out and then we went right we've got him in Europe yeah we've got him in, in England yeah and we, had, we hadn't we couldn't venture into South America because we didn't have the budget, like you mean, but we actually placed people living in Europe to start the process of yeah. saying when when they when they ring up, we'll say we've already got a yes or no. So it, it, it's that's it's a key huge, as you, look as you said, I mean Brighton can, can. Brighton have got it Brighton are probably the best example of a small club getting it right at the yeah. moment. Who will Canale, continue Canale to Canale get, and it looks like they'll continue to get it right as well. By the way, by their process, and of course, you won't be surprised if you know a few of those uh, recruitment guys they get poached out of Brighton. Exactly, like and that's where normally United, Manchester United, where it be the getting a, the top fitness coach or the top whatever yes, right, yeah. years ago. That that's what they were able to do, and hopefully, look, the sooner they can get these people in, as you mentioned, because then it's their contacts or their recruitment ideas. That that process has yeah. to start happening, and hopefully it has it has yeah. been happening, and they're ahead on a few potential transfer targets. Who knows? Manchester United obviously not the only club that have struggled with with recruitment this season or over the last few seasons. I mean, Chelsea have bought so many players, but for them, one piece of great business is ended up being Cole Palmer. I mean, is it is he player of the season, Sam? I mean, he's definitely by the season. Is he up there? Should he be? Is is he in contention? Do you think he's player oh, of the season? Well, uh, well, I think that uh, I think he, he, you have to look at the situation and say, if you if if he was at Man City now doing that, that everybody'd say he had to be player of the season because Chelsea have had a bad season. Yeah, he won't. He, won't he probably won't get it, yeah. but he should. There's no doubt when somebody a big fan. with no with no experience. No experience. Yeah. Blitz is the Premier League. Twenty goals, not a striker, midfield player, and assists. Coolest man on penalties. Yeah. You know what I mean, even uh, when his mates are fighting over, yeah, fighting over it. it. Yeah. <laughs> it was brilliant. So, that, just watching well, him just come in at the last. I mean, the I last mean, minute. Just give me that. Will you? You've got young Conor Gallagher <laughs> there. He's twenty-two. Right, he's captain. Yeah. You know, yeah. I had Conor and loan at West Brom. Yeah, then obviously a really bad experience about get losing every week, like I mean, which I think has helped him in fact develop, yeah. develop, you know what I mean? He goes in and goes did it think and I go, Well done, son. Yeah. You got these big time challenges. Would have been interesting to see if it was nil nil. Yeah, I know, yeah. In ninetieth yeah. minute. Yeah, they wouldn't have it, would it? Yeah. No, that's true, John. Right, yeah. But getting back to Cole Palmer, yeah. You, you'd have to look, you'd have to say Sam has a good point in terms of if it was at City it, and if City go on to do, obviously be successful and win a couple of trophies or whatever it does highlight him even more but you'd have to appreciate he's gone in look he, he has been he obviously played for City so did have some experience and was in that kind of environment to showcase he, he had good ability because he was yeah. playing a few games and yeah. obviously scoring a few goals for them Help so, make him the player he is obviously yeah, yeah exactly yeah, and then, yeah. but then the fact that he's gone there he, Look, to take basically, he's gone into Chelsea as a big signing, but ultimately he's been their best player, and just gone. I'm your best player now. Simple as that. It's it's been it's been never, very good. Very never, good. To never see looks like rushed, John, does he? No, and it's always looks calm. I mean, the hectic way of the game. Heck, it's like yeah. you know, it just and here we go. Wow, where's, Even where's like the, the first goal he got oh, the other night where oh, he does a little just did the build up to it and the finish. Yeah. The finish. That that just summed them up. And, really. then, and then the right footer. Yeah, the confidence for it. Look, yeah, and people you know will probably I mean? argue, say, look, he's scored a few penalties. Nine. And, got to score them, You've got to score them. Yep. You got, and he's, you're a young young kid putting yourself up there like that. He's been amazing. And look, it's just a shame he's shame he's not Irish, Sam. He <laughs> That's very true, yeah, yeah. yeah. John is ready. Looked? Have you looked? <laughs> Have you looked at grandma and granddad? Does it go back yeah. to grandma and granddad, does it? Yeah. Yeah. No, well, it's, I mean, a, that, it's a nice problem for England to have well, that moves us nicely on to England because that is indeed a problem that they have now because obviously you've got Phil Foden it's not you've got, it's what, not, you're it's right, right you're problem. right yeah. Phil Foden Jude Bellingham Cole Palmer Saka, Saka yeah. what are you doing Sam? Declan Rice the law Rashford, play Rashford oh, Rashford yeah, Rashford in the mix yeah it's, but Marcus is going to be, yeah, be a pressure, test for him isn't yeah, it because like, it, 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 of what, what who's in form and who's 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 threatening some of the 
more regulars of England is a great, a great right headache for, for Gareth. You can't ignore Palmer now. And you got you got no because you, you, you look at Gareth's you history got, in the sense of loyalty with loyalty, yeah, the but, players, which has yeah. gotten but, but so got, well. But got, ultimately, if you've, if you, your player staring you, in the face, you're, in you're, such mi- form. you're missing out. You're one of your favourites, Grealish. Yeah, and and, yeah. and he's been great for the last few games. I know, he's yeah. got, and he's got maybe twelve more games to go. So. You know what I mean? So yeah. you've got you've got the yeah. best. England's got the best. If if Harry Kane stays fit, but even then, you you know you've got a couple of backups for. You'll probably take like you know, mean and Ivan Tony or, or Watkins. Ollie Watkins and you know, yeah. so that's covered. You know, maybe defensively might be central defensively, maybe might be our our, our weaker spot now because of the quality going forward, but certainly enough to win it. Yeah, look I, I, we played against France in the qualifying um for the Euro, so I know firsthand in terms of how good the French, good the French squad are, are, not just yeah. not just the team, and mm. they've look. And you go back to the think of that World Cup final, and they've got they the probably should have beat. They've they got the experience of winning it, haven't yeah. they? You know yeah. what I mean? So that'll is, be the that could be know, the, the word, probably point. slightly edge mm. France to be favourites. But as you mentioned, that England attacking options, it's a nice issue to have, definitely for Gareth. I'm Scottish, John. Can you quickly tell me, do you think we've got a chance against Switzerland? Obviously, you've seen them up close. Yeah, to no, that you definitely will have a chance. We kind of got to grips with them much more in the second half when we played them, but very experienced team when you think of uh, Shakira, Shakiri, <laughs> Shakira. <laughs> <laughs> Good boy. Gerard, Gerard's, uh, Gerard's uh, ex-wife. Um, uh, Xhaka, the players that they have, real good, real good experience in the team, but Scotland will, will definitely cause them problems. I've, I've no doubt. But um, no, don't I won't, you don't underestimate them either because they they always qualify for tournaments. They always kind of get there and they have surprised a few teams as well in tournaments too. But Scotland will be right in the mix against them. I've no doubt. Yes. Yes, that's what we like, Sam. Absolutely. Um, a couple of other quick bits about um, some of your former clubs. Are you keeping an eye on Reading at the minute? Um, I mean, surviving after a points deduction, all the ownership yeah. issues. Yeah, look, obviously I have. And, and no, obviously, um, Mark Bowen down there. Obviously, what they've been having to do. Um, what's gone on in terms of, obviously, still know some of the staff there too. Um, look, it's been, it's been terrible to see because you think... Uh, the stadium they have, the training Great. ground that they move Great, to, yeah. you know, it's yeah, really nice, a yeah. really good setup in terms of they always produce good kids um from their academy. Obviously Michael Elise was there not so long ago doing brilliant at Palace now. Um it's it, it's a sh- and look thankfully looks like they've obviously survived, haven't they, this season quite comfortably enough. But has the club been sold to a new owner or not? I think yeah, there's potential, yeah. Sale. Look, it's, it seems to be close. Great potential, close. really, isn't it? Yeah, you know I mean? yeah, when you think of they're close to Obviously, the the area where they are in terms of it, look, it's attractive to to lots of players as well in that sense too. So, mm. but a really good when you meet fans at outside the club or outside when you're going into the stadium and stuff, they're so passionate about it and um, rightly so because it's a big part of the community down there as well. And great, hopefully they do get that new owner across sooner rather than later because what look. The, the owner that was there previously, he, whether he, how this happens at club, Sam, I don't know in terms of what, why they decide. Obviously, they have fr- frustrations themselves in terms of they're not happy. They thought they were going to get promoted. They were told they're going to get to the Premier League, no problem, you know, and they keep investing money and next thing they just <coughs> no, we're not going to do that anymore. And it's, it, it's tough to see that happen in terms of how can clubs overcome that I don't know yeah, I've, checks have to be done beforehand I suppose in terms of making sure there's guarantees or something like that I don't know how you kind of com- no, those, combat that yeah those guarantees have to be obviously we've seen a lot of lot of problems with more unscrupulous owners coming into buying football clubs particularly Berry and, and Bolton nearly went under when you know yeah. and went under under I mean Berry have only just bought the ground back and trying to work their way through the leagues Bolton yeah. was only a couple of days off of a very very similar Scenario. outcome, yeah. you know what I mean, and and so without the right checks, without the right guarantees, but you, I mean the EFL and the Premier League can't allow a football club to be taken over. They really must be much more stringent than yeah on the, on the than, they, than they have been. You know what I mean? So 
But look, getting right. back to just quickly, think, fingers crossed they've they've kind of hopefully they do get that new owner sorted and um, they can just concentrate on because they have a great academy down there as well, really good academy and as I mentioned, producing good good players and um, hopefully that that definitely continues. Championship is so competitive. I mean, especially that bottom end of the championship. Um, you mentioned Sammy Smodix before in terms of playing for Ireland. 30 yeah. goals this season. I've watched Blackburn. I've worked. I've covered Blackburn a few times this season, so yeah. I've seen him up close. He always, Every time I go, he always scores one, two, yeah. scoring all the time. How highly do you rate him? Where do you think his future lies? Yeah, well, look, as Sam mentioned it earlier, um, uh, in terms of how much he enjoyed working with Jermaine Defoe in the sense of you know that chances are going to come about. Yes. He's going to be in the right place. He's going to be... And Sammy, look, I'm not saying Sammy's good. He's not up to Jermaine's level yet, but it, scoring 30 goals is definitely helping you. But um, no, look, he, I think he just... Obviously, where Blackman would be without him, you can you imagine. Um, he's a really... Every level he's kind of gone up to and he's worked his way up through his career that he's took the challenge on, hasn't he? And he, yeah. He's he, he scored yes, goals. Definitely. And, He'll definitely be attracting, not that Blackburn fans would want to hear, but he, he, look, he'll have to be attra- attracting attention when you, you you score that amount of goals, you know. And um, but it, just long may it continue. And it was great that we were able to get him, um, obviously to play recently as well against uh, against Belgium as his first start for Ireland too. So look, he well deserved, well deserved, and hopefully there'll be more to come from. There's so few of a far between for some reason goal scorers. Out and out goal scorers, yeah. Know. Well, I mean, and he's comfortable. He, like yeah. he, he can do centre forward. He can do off the left, off mm. the right, in in the ten, in behind the striker. Yeah. You know, so he has that natural football and brain as well to be in the right place at the right time, which is always uh, very valuable. So into the last bit now this is our not so quick fire questions section. <laughs> um, I mentioned that we always ask our viewers, our listeners, if they'd like to send a question for our yeah. guests, which you can do so on our Instagram now, on our Twitter on our Very comment good. on the YouTube videos, you can message me. Um, loads of people mentioned this specific moment of your career. And I wonder uh, if it sticks out at you. Um, now, on your Wikipedia... He, he obviously you know, knows yeah. which one it is. Which, 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 which moment yeah. do you I think, think it is? Ask him yes. which you do. Yes. Come on, tell us. Oh, I've, well, I have a feeling it'll be about a nutmeg, possibly. It is about, <laughs> a, nutmeg. <laughs> it is about yeah. a nutmeg. So, um, your Wikipedia <laughs> specifically says... He's proved. I, thought, I used oh, to say a lot of things that Wikipedia page <laughs> over the over the years, but anyway. Yeah. Oh seven oh eight season. He proved an important utility player during a European double, but more importantly, a legendary nutmeg on Luis Figo. Which one of those was the bigger achievement? <laughs> <laughs> oh no! Look, it's amazing because even last it was last year or two years ago, um, I did a, 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 an advert over in, in Dublin. Yeah. For, the, for the Champions League, yeah, uh, the yeah. promotion type of thing, but that's what they wanted to talk. That was part of the, the everything. Advert. That's right, <laughs> the, the Champions League. Um, just got over over a nutmeg, and it, that was twenty years ago, over twenty one years ago, now or whatever. So on his phone every day. It was fine. I was laughing. No, I certainly, I certainly thought it's showing the kids like dad. No, this kind of strange memorabilia you get sent from our. Fans, uh, there was a T-shirt sent to me, like as well. But I've not made Lewis Vigo. This was going back, obviously, twenty years ago, a few months after the you still event. Wear it. I, don't, I don't think uh, Lewis Vigo is too is too too worried about no, it. No, no, I would, I would have gla- I would have gladly have been megged by Vigo a hundred times, and we went on to win the game. That's what I've always said. It was that Real Madrid team that we played that year, or a proper Mega, proper yeah. team, like a. Okay, yeah. Hopefully. The, it's a kind of Madrid team that might turn up tonight. Oui. But, uh, look, I know that's gone. <laughs> um, no, look, it's it, it's an, look. It was a, it was a great thing to do as such, but it's it happens all the time in, in games. You see it, but I'm just laughing. Yeah, at, I'm laughing about how much it's been immortalized over the years. It's uh, it's quite funny, but no, I'll take winning trophies all day over 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 a situation like that. I say wear the t-shirt, wear it every day. <laughs> yeah. Um, a nice, a nice, good quick fire one for you. Which former Manchester United teammate would you least like to be stuck in a lift with? Oh, oh that's a God. bad one. Yeah. <laughs> I'd refuse to answer that if I were you. <laughs> uh, oh, there'd be different reasons. Sarah, <laughs> different people, yeah. Oh, wow. Have a few if you want. <laughs> Wouldn't like to be stuck in a lift with. Um, I think probably. Oh, who can we say here? I don't want to... St- not that I'm stitching someone up here now, but 
I'd be wanting someone, if I'm stuck in a lift, I want them to help me out a bit, wouldn't I? So I'd be like, but I wouldn't want a tattoo. He's thinking, oh, this is quick oh, fire. Yeah, like quick this. fire. What was the name that first came into your head that you stopped yourself saying? Um. <laughs> <laughs> that was very good, by the way. That was very good. Oh, I can't say. I can't <laughs> say. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm going to say, uh, don't say Scolzy. Scolzy, Scolzy, just like if you're just chilling. If he no, he won't, he won't help us out at all. He'd be like, ah, look, someone will come and get us. Some, someone will come and help us out. So, um, or it was possibly Gaz Nev. Gaz Nev, I'd, I'd be thinking, where, where's my headphones? I'd hope I'd have my head be screaming. <laughs> I'd be screaming, screaming and shouting, going, what's going on? Um, no, those two, but <coughs> two great lads as well. Great, love that. Thank you. And finally, you played left back, you played right back, you played centre back, you played centre midfield, you played up front, and you played as a goalkeeper. Which is the easiest <laughs> position to play? And um, how did you end up in net in that game Ooh. versus oh. first? Tell us about your best save first. Yeah. Tell best us about you'll remember your best save. Oh, one on one with Keno with Robbie. Oh, really? Yeah, a little one on Robbie wasn't too oh, happy. But he wasn't. Oh, oh. Much Robbie loves I'll his remind him about them when yeah. I speak to him next. <laughs> One and we were going on international duty afterwards as well, oh. so he, he, wasn't, he wasn't too happy. Oh, good. Um, but look, we were four nil up. I, 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 I was clever enough thinking well, we're four nil up with about fifteen to go oh, yeah, down and down a white hard lane. Do I think yeah. we'll be okay. Yeah. yeah. Um, but are you going off us, Michael? No, Edwin. Edwin, Edwin got a yeah, yeah. All the subs were on, and he, um, I think he busted, broke his nose. So uh, Rio was going to go and goal. But then it was like, no, no, look, I'll go on a bit of Gaelic football. I'll be, I'll be yeah. okay. So did he get the gloves on? Got the gloves on and uh, flapped that a few, but thankfully kept a clean sheet. Right. And, uh, made a made a good save at Robbie one on one. But um, no, look, I think me fa- <laughs> was there a favourite position? Quite yeah, which one was your easiest or favourite? Or ah, uh, depending on it. Look, I love I love playing centre back in the sense that that's where I kind of. Grew up, but playing fullback at United was uh, was brilliant as well because he got to join in attacking a lot of the time too. So I'd have to say uh, right back or left back, no problem with it. Love that. Thank you very much. Thank Thanks, you for Sean. coming on. It's pleasure. been a Thanks real much. pleasure. Yep. I told you it wouldn't be half an hour. No, pleasure. Good luck, <laughs> Good luck with the Thank future you, career. I hope you get the island job, exactly. to be honest with you. I hope they show faith in you and go and do it. Brilliant. Thank you. Cheers, got a reference there you go thanks Sam <laughs> thank you as always yeah. um, hopefully looking forward to tonight enjoy. Sam is going to the Real Madrid game tonight I am enjoy hopefully we I enjoy my grandson's birthday today 22 that's his treat ah amazing Man City no versus laughing, Real Madrid. Madrid it couldn't be a better treat than that could there you are you're getting spoiled eh? yeah. yeah by the time you listen or watch this hopefully you know getting I'm spoiled yeah. watching Real Madrid yeah. oh, 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 oh thank you for watching <laughs> another episode of No To Be Tappy Football brought to you by William Hill 